Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set up the uh, Sony a6400 for cinema and uh, video use. If you're shooting movies or if you're shooting just uh, videos, uh, I'm gonna show you how to go in and and manually set up your camera so you have con con complete control over things like uh, color balance, uh, shutter speed, uh, your f-stop, ISO, all those things, making sure that you can get get the optimal uh, settings out of your out of your camera. So, because uh, it does have like an all auto mode, but we're not showing how to do that. We want to show how to professionally control these cameras, uh, so you can set them up uh, for for the exposure and the, the and everything else that you want for the settings that you want uh, manually setting the camera up. So first of all, we're going to turn on our camera. The switch to turn on the camera is right here. I'm already turned on. I've already got it turned on because I'm recording to my uh, external recorder here. So, but yeah, you'll flip the switch right here and you will turn it to the on position to turn your camera on. And then you want to make sure that this wheel here is set up for video work. A lot of these options here, especially the PASM, those items are for still photography there. But as we move over to this film strip right there, that little film strip is the one that you want to be on uh, for doing video work. If you're shooting video and or if you're, if you're doing film, if you're doing kind of the movie mode film, film work or video work, that's the tab, that's, you want to scroll your wheel over to the movie mode there. So first of all, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my display uh, settings here and kind of look at the camera settings right now. I'm going to hit the display. It's the wheel on the back of the camera right here. You just push that button up and it will bring up a uh, uh, different levels of displays. I'm going to keep hitting that button uh, and look at my screen here until I get all, my menu, all, all of my uh, settings displayed here on my camera. So now you want to look around your camera settings here and we'll, let's talk about what each one of these do kind of in the video mode. Let's start up here at the top with the XA VCS HD and 24p there. Uh, first of all, that is the codec that you're shooting in. The 24p is your frame rate. I'm recording in 24 frames per second uh, progressive scan and I've got uh, 50 megabits per second. This camera is capable of doing 4K and right now, if it's in the XA VCS HD codec, the HD basically means it's 1920 by 1080. I'm just doing that for my recording right now. Uh, so I'm in 1920 by 1080, but if I hit menu, but if I hit the menu button, I found here just at the top of my LCD screen on the back of the camera, it will pop up this menu. And you have several menu tabs here, several sections here. You got these uh, sections here at the top, one, two, three, four, five, six sections at the top. But uh, with it each, Within each one of these, you have submenus. Uh, let's say uh, you use the back of your wheel and you push this uh, wheel left or right. You can also scroll it if you want to, uh, but, but you can just click to the left or to the right on this wheel here and up and down to navigate in between these menus. I like clicking on this. I'll hit to the uh, right here and you'll notice I'm in the submenu here, number one. If I hit arrow up, it'll select that and I can go through these different submenus. I can go through these separate main menus here, and then I can, if I click down, it goes under these separate submenus. And over here on the right, you'll see uh, this has 14 pages underneath this one uh, camera icon, the number one camera icon. If I arrow up and arrow to the right, this one has nine. Uh, nine pages here. Uh, so to get access those pages, you arrow down to get inside of them, and now you arrow left and right uh, to go through, and you'll see these numbers updating on the right, meaning this is page two, three, four, five, and so on. So arrow up to get out of that, arrow over here to one, and let's arrow down and go through some of the settings here. So to set up our camera here, I'm going to arrow over to my camera number two items here, and we're going to arrow down, and I'm going to arrow down to file format. This is where you set your format. So you set your format and your frame rate and all those items. I'm going to select this and I'm going to choose, I would recommend shoot, uh, shooting in 4K. You'll have this high quality footage you're able to zoom in on and punch, in on, punch into a little bit uh, digitally in post-production if you need to. But uh, 4K is going to be twice the resolution as this one below, which is HD. Uh, I'm not going to choose this right now because it'll, uh, it'll kill my recording. So you would choose 4K and after that you would go down to record setting and you select that. And you have, and I've got it set at 24p, uh, which is 24 progressive scan uh, for film. That's the same frame rate as film, and it's at 50 megabits per second. If I was at 4K, you would also have a 100 megabits per second option for 24p, which I don't have, uh, so I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. But yeah, so half the resolution is half the is half the data rate, uh, so that would be 24p, 100 megabits per second. If you're shooting video, you can actually go 60p if you wish. 60p, at, I'd go the highest quality. Recommend the highest data rate. 60p. Is going to give me 60 frames per second. That is if I'm shooting uh, video. If you're trying to shoot some high frame rate, you're just doing like a, uh, a vlog or something, or just uh, something like that, uh, you probably want to shoot 60 frames per second because it has a smoother video motion. But if you're trying to get the film look, uh, 24p is the way to go. So right now I'm going to say in HD rather than go U then rather rather than going 4K, which is fine. Let's, I'm going to hit menu, the menu button on the back of my camera, and it will go back to my screen here. 
to our uh, video picture that we're showing. So as we move on down the line here, we have battery power up at the front and, and the percentage of the battery power that's left. Uh, as we go down uh, the screen here, I'm going to skip this one for now. We're going to go to go down to the next, down to AWB. AWB stands for Auto White Balance, and I don't want to. And if you're doing professional, if you're trying to get as professional as possible, you don't want your white balance fluctuating as different lights hit it. Because if you hit some a warmer light, uh, it'll compensate by adding more blue to the shot, and vice versa. So, uh, not a good idea to leave it on Auto White Balance. You want a white balance for the type of light that you are shooting under. Right now I'm under fluorescent lights. The three kind of uh, major uh, three color temperatures you're going to be working with are going to be indoor or incandescent light, also indoor or fluorescent light, and outdoor sunlight. And in some instances, uh, maybe shaded sunlight or, or standing in the shade of a building or something like that. But we're going to hit our function button on the back of the camera. Uh, you can go to, you can dig through the menus and find these. I find it easier just to go to the function button. It says FN button on the back. Hit that function button. It brings up this few of these customized quick options here. You can arrow uh, around on your wheel, clicking to the left or the right, up and down to select one of these. I'm going to select the AWB, which is my white balance, and I'm going to change this to uh, the color temperature I'm working under. Right now I'm under fluorescent, fluorescent white, so I'm going to go under this fluorescent symbol, which is fluorescent zero. If you're doing a typical indoor film shoot and you're using incandescent bulbs, you're going to go to the incandescent light. And if you're outside, you're going to go to the sun. Make sure you change those to compensate for the color. Uh, you'll see my color shifting there. And the, more ac the most accurate color reading here is going to be my fluorescent zero that gives me more of a, an accurate color display for the room that I'm in right now because I'm under these uh, cool white fluorescent lights. Most fluorescent right lights uh, uh, will have a color temperature of, uh, uh, of the cool white color temperature. Uh, so I'm going to select that. And now my temperature, if you go back to my function key, you can see that now my white balance is on is on fluorescent. So different lights have different color temperatures, so you got to get uh, get the right color lighting there. These items here are uh, some kind of special function for um, for still photography. We're not going to worry about those right now. But as we move down to the bottom here, you'll see uh, that we've got. Next one we're going to go on to is ISO here. Sometimes when you try to change ISO and you're trying to change uh, shutter speed and you're trying to change uh, your f stop, the three kind of tiers of exposure. You'll, uh, it, it may be locked. It may not let you actually change that. So uh, what we can do there, just to make sure, I'm going to go into menu, and we're going to be in the number two menu up here, the camera number two, and the very first page has this uh, program auto. That's going to make that makes all of your exposure levels. It'll compensate uh, with uh, shutter speed versus your f-stop versus your ISO to get a, what it thinks is a proper exposure. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to go down and say, no, we don't want program auto. We want to do everything manually. You can have it on the program auto if you just want to run around and you're not worried. You don't want to have to worry about irising up or down. But sometimes if you're in a dark area, what can happen? It, it will it will bring up your ISO, or crank up your ISO really high, and you'll start getting a really grainy image. Right now, I uh, I chose the manual, so now I'm in full manual mode. You can see that up here at the top left hand corner that now my uh, exposure is in manual mode and no longer in program auto. So first thing, let's go through ISO. That is sensor sensitivity. That's how that's your uh, a sensor's ability to detect, to see light, essentially. And if, and if you're in a dark room, it's going to be harder for it to see things. So the more light, the better, usually. But I'm going to hit my function key, and this is another quick way of getting to your ISO. I'm going to arrow over to the right, arrow up on, the, on my back wheel on the, on the camera, and I'm going to choose ISO, and we're not going to do ISO auto. I'm going to set my ISO. Probably, usually standard ISO for indoors is, uh, is 800. I'm going to go to 800. If you're outside, I'd recommend keeping it at around 100. Uh, but I'm going to go up to... 800 here. I'm going to arrow down, select it. Uh, right now it seems dark because my shutter speed and my f-stop need to be uh, adjusted as well, but I'm going to choose 800, and that's pretty standard ISO for, for indoor. If you're outdoor, like I said, you probably want to crank it down to uh, 100 if you're in bright sunlight. Uh, if that's not, if, if you're still getting too much light in your camera, you probably need to put an ND filter on the front of your lens to block the light coming in. And, uh, and if you're in the dark, uh, sometimes you can create, you can create this camera up to about 1600 before you start really introducing a lot of noise in the sensor. Uh, so 1600, it's not its native setting. Its native setting is 800, but you can crank this up to about 1600 before you really start seeing the noise from the, from the uh, ISO uh, boost. That's an artificial ISO boost, essentially. All right, moving over, you see this blinking negative two. We will get into that as we talk about exposure. I'll come back to that. Uh, but let's move over to our f-stop. So by default, um, the wheel on top of the camera seen here is the one that you want to scroll. 
uh, back and forth to change your f-stop. What your f-stop is, it's a number that represents uh, your focal length uh, divided by your aperture diameter. What that basically comes down to is uh, how many times you can fit the size of your amateur, aperture within your focal length, how long your lens is, the distance from, the, uh, from the, the lens to the actual image sensor is your focal length. So this means right here, 5.6 means you can fit that size of my aperture within my focal length 5.6 times. So if I can fit it in uh, less times here, I'm going to scroll this over, and this little meter comes up. If I do 3.5, that means my iris is now more open. Because it's 3.5, you can only fit it in 3.5 times. If you turn it the other way, you can fit it in uh, 11 times, 13 times. And now it's getting super dark because it's stopping down my iris. Uh, and each standard stop is going to be a uh, cutting your light in half. Uh, these are not standard f-stops here, these are kind of increments in between. Uh, as you go from like 4 to 5, 6, that is a full stop of light. That means you've uh, uh, decreased your, if you go from 4 to 5, 6, it means you've de decreased the amount of light coming in to your aperture. Uh, literally, you've re literally cut it in half. Or if you go the other way, you're doubling it. So that's what a stop of light is. Going from 4 to 5, 6 is a stop of light. And from five and from five six to eight is a stop of light and so on. But these, but this does it, which is nice. It does increments between the, the stops, so you can do like half a stop rather than a full stop. So this is actually from four to four point five is one third of a stop to five point is another third of a stop. Then two, then all, the, then three thir three thirds. So that's a full stop from four to five six. So it does it in increments of thirds, which is which is really nice. All right, so I'm going to put my uh, f-stop around uh, standard for indoor shooting. If you got a good amount of light, is in between four and five. So I'm going to just put it on four right now, so I get a little bit more light here. Uh, and now it's still dark. So the other thing that we've got to do is move down to this area right here, which is one two hundred fiftieth of a second. That is what's called your shutter speed. That is exposure time. That's how long. So uh, the the f-stop is how much exposure you're doing, how much how much physical light is coming in the camera. ISO 800 is how sensitive your sensor is to that light, and shutter speed is how long you expose, how long you decide to expose each individual frame for. If you're shooting 24 frames per second, the maximum you can do is 1 24th of a second, which makes sense. Because 24 times that equals a full 24, which is your is one second, 24 frames per second. Standard for film is going half exposure time, which would be 1 48th of a second. Rather than 1 24th of a second, 1 one forty eighth of a second is standard. Our shutter speed on the Sony only goes by increments of 10. It will not let you go to 48. So the closest we can get is 1 50th. Now you're going to use the wheel on the back of the, uh, the camera here. If you scroll the wheel around right here, I'm going to put my thumb on the... Uh, here I've got my thumb on the wheel. If you grab this and wheel it around, that's going to change your shutter speed. So let's try that here. I'm going to move my wheel and notice it brings up your little scale here. It shows it in fractions of a second here. I'm going to scroll down to 1 50th and look at this. We're starting to get a decent exposure now. So we're set at 1 50th of 4 and uh, ISO 800. So nothing that, none of this is automated and it's not giving us a really grainy image because it boosted up the, uh, the ISO or anything. This is, this is going to be a really clean image that I'm recording here. Our exposure, exposure levels look good, but a good way of testing exposure is going to be right here, and this is your light meter. Uh, your light meter right now tells you how many stops of light you are overexposed in a certain area of your camera. The way you tell what area you're going to work on here is you hit the function key, you move over to this little item right here, and this is your metering mode. This will tell you what this is metering right now. If I select this, it'll show some options. Right now it's multi. This is giving me kind of a general overall feel for this image, telling me if the overall image looks overexposed or underexposed, and right now it says it's like per it's like perfectly exposed. Uh, that doesn't mean you're not getting hot spots in part. This, the paper I have up here might be a little overexposed, and the whiteboard might be a little overexposed, but it's giving me an overall reading for the entire image. If we go back and do another function here, we go to... If we hit our function key and go back to our metering mode and we go down to here to center, this is going to be center weighted mostly for the center uh, space of the camera. And you can even go down to spot mode here and you can do standard, which gives you this little circle, this little black circle right here. And it tells you exactly what uh, exposure level you're getting for that specific circle region right there. So it tells me that that spot is one stop underexposed. And it's gray, so it's, it's a little darker gray, so that's not a good reading for my overall image. If I pan my camera here, if I pan my camera here and put it on that spot right there, this says it's 0.7 stops overexposed. So about 70% of a full stop overexposed, which is really not. It's got some good detail there. If I go to the whiteboard, it's just white. So if I go there, this tells me uh, it's 1.3 stops exposed. And look at this light spot right here. If I go to that little 
hit of light right there, that's probably going to be, that one maxes out at two, and it says this is uh, possibly two plus more. Let's go up to the light on the ceiling. And that if it blinks like that, this says this is more than, it'll only stop at two, and it says this is overexposed and you've got detail loss. So you need to, uh, just for that spot right there. So just some uh, instruments that you have inside there. There's some other metering modes that they've added to the 6400 that are kind of nice as well. Rather than the multi here, if you go down to this one here, this says entire screen average. The multi does multi spots throughout the, the image. This one does your entire screen. And it says uh, right now that I'm, uh, it's saying that I'm a little bit underexposed, which isn't too bad, about 0.7 um, uh, underexposed. We could actually iris up more here. So I'm gonna grab my wheel on top and we're gonna iris to 3.5 and see what it says. That's all the way open. Uh, now it says it's 0.3 stops underexposed, which is great. I mean, that, that, that works really well as long. When you get, get around one, for, for your overall image, when you get around one, well, like one full stop overexposed or underexposed, you want to try to kind of rein that in a little bit. Another way of detecting, another way of looking at overexposure here is by hitting uh, your display button until you get this histogram. Now this histogram here, this is showing that it's a, it's a, it's a uh, maybe a little bit underexposed. You get that mountain it, the, over to the far left of the screen. Uh, the far left is uh, underexposure, and it shows detail loss uh, in the darks. And over to the right, you're going to get uh, under that is overexposure, and that means you're going to get detail loss in the highlights. Uh, so right now, I'm not getting really any detail loss in the highlights. If I tilt this up to the light again, you're going to notice that I get this mountain that kind of goes up. Look at this change, and now I'm getting that spike to the right, saying you've got some pixels, some concentrated pixels here that are spiked at, at uh, uh, losing detail. If I pan here to the left and get that hot spot on the board, look, I'm barely getting a little bit of peaking on there to the right, saying that, 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 that I'm getting detail loss. So that's a little bit, but if you get a big amount like that, then you got to be careful. But what you're kind of aiming for is getting that mountain in the middle of your screen, kind of, let's get this just kind of some grays and just normal exposure stuff here, avoiding some of the highlighted white areas. And I am going to uh, bring my shutter speed down. I usually don't want to bring it down below half, uh, half exposure time, but I'm going to just for the sake of increasing my, my image here. I'm going to take it down to 1 25th of a shutter speed. I'm getting a mountain that's more in the middle there. You kind of want to go for the mid area here for the biggest mountain of pixels. Kind of, you can see kind of your general exposure there is uh, getting up in the middle there. So that, that's a little bit better. Now watch what happens if we show you an underexposed shot. Let's turn my shutter speed back up to 1 50th and let's change our f-stop here and go darker. And then look what happens to our mountain as we do that. So look how we have, this is mostly weighted to the left. That's saying that this shot is, is underexposed. And if the mountain was to the far right, that would mean that my image is largely overexposed. So if we crank this up here, open that all the way. Let's move it toward the board where we're really getting some bright image here. And then look at that big mountain to the right there. That's saying that we're getting some overexposure in the shot. So that's our histogram that kind of is another tool to help us with our and we'll even crank that up even more, 1 25th of a second. And now look at that big old spike to the right. That means this image is largely, largely overexposed. Go back over. And there we go. When we're on the white, we really see that. So I, I could actually just uh, change my shutter speed back to 1 50th and get, and we can even fix this in post-production as well, as long as you're within like a, a one-stop range-ish. Okay, as we move over to the side here, you have PP off. That basically means picture profile. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our menu settings. We're gonna hit menu. And in the camera two tab here, we're in the camera two tab and we arrow down and we're on page one right now. Let's arrow over. So I'm gonna arrow up to camera two and we're gonna arrow over to the right and arrow down. And now we're on these pages here. I'm gonna arrow right until I come across a screen. Screen number 11 is picture profile. This is how your camera treats colors and, uh, and colors and contrast and uh, Colors and contrast, basically your overall gamma, overall brightness of your image. I'm gonna select this. And uh, you got several picture profiles down here. Now this is kind of weird the way it selects. You have to like basically uh, arrow down to different picture profiles and you'll see shifts in the color and the contrast as we arrow down through pi different picture profiles. Uh, but we're gonna go to picture profile one. Don't hit enter or it will just select it. If you wanna change it, you arrow to the right and it will, now that's entered picture profile one and you can do changes on this. By default, this uh, picture profile one is uh, uh, gamma is in movie mode and color is in movie mode. It kind of gives a good amount of saturation and a good amount of contrast without going over the top. Like if you use a 709 um, gamma curve, 
uh, for the brightness levels, let's see if they've got a 709. Yeah, there's an IC709. You're going to get more of a contrasty, uh, uh, sa very saturated contrasty image. And that's kind of hard to correct in post-production. So I find that I like uh, either movie mode. What I really like to shoot in is uh, Cine 2 on the uh, gamma. It gives kind of a, a, kind of a medium uh, gamma and contrast level. And then color mode also doesn't oversaturate it if you put it on uh, cinema mode here. So cinema mode and Cine 2 on the on the gamma is a good one to, that I like shooting in, generally speaking. If you really if you want to increase your the, your dynamic range, your camera's ability to to uh, keep uh, the highlights and the darks into details, if you're shooting outside especially, I sometimes like to shoot in what's called a log mode. Uh, you'd have to look at separate videos on log. I'm not going to get into that right now, but you have different sort of log modes, which give you kind of flatter images uh, that, is, that will give you a higher dynamic range for your camera. And you'll be able to grade these, uh, have a little bit more color grading ability later on. But, so, but your, your shot's going to look washed out while you're shooting it, which is not a bad thing necessarily, uh, but you just want to be aware of that. And we can choose like an S gamut. As a color mode as well here, the Sony gamut, and then you have the S log, which is Sony log logarithmic logarithmic uh, LUT basically that's shooting in. A lot of people don't think S log is a LUT. It is a LUT. It's 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 treating your footage in a very specific way. It's just giving it a lot less contrasty look, very flat look, which kind of looks ugly at first, but it looks beautiful when you grade it when you uh, when you do the grading. So like I said, I would recommend. Let's. I'm going to do picture profile one as my uh, S log setup, and then I'm going to go to picture profile two. I'm going to change the gamut to we don't want it to still, we want it to Cine 2, and I want my color mode to Cinema. So let's look at the differences between that. There's not like uh, tons of color in here to really judge these by, but you can see the change. There's Picture Profile 1, flat and not as colorful, Picture Profile 2, which is my Cine mode, and that's uh, that's more colorful and more contrasty. But this one here, Picture Profile 1, will grade better lately, and I can boost the colors up, bring the colors out, and, and get the contrast exactly where I want to without losing details and the darks and the highlights. So let's just keep it on that right now on, on Picture Profile 1. Moving on up the line here, we go to where it says MF right here. It might not say MF on yours, but mine does. That stands for manual focus. If you hit the function key, this will take you to uh, another uh, quick menu for focusing. Now over here, you go to the MF on the focus mode right there that is set on manual focus. And this is grayed out. And the reason why this is grayed out is because it does not support autofocus with this specific lens. Uh, it actually does, but I've got, a, I've got a, a, an actual physical switch on this lens. A lot of the lenses, the Sony lenses that you get will not have this item. But on this lens, on the side, I've got this uh, manual focus and autofocus switch. So you can have it locked in one way or the other. And like I said, a lot of the Sony lenses uh, will just have that. You just choose it inside the camera. But right now, I'm going to put this on autofocus. And that will unlock the option inside of, uh, of my camera. So now inside my camera, if I hit function, and like I said, most of them will not ha have that. It, you can just do it right here digitally inside your camera. I'm going to choose the AFC. Right now, it's on autofocus continuous. If you want to do manual, you can go down and do manual, and now I've got manual control over my lens here. Let's zoom up on something. This is my zoom lens, so I can zoom up on this, and you can see I can move my focus ring on the actual end of the lens, and I can manually focus this in and out of focus. If you're really trying to control it and you want to tell it what to be in focus and what to have out of focus, this the manual focus is the way to go. Otherwise, uh, it, this is good if you're trying to follow somebody and keep them in focus. There's one instance where I think that the um, that the autofocus in a camera, I usually say auto nothing, manual everything. With these Sony cameras, if you're kind of a person, if you're kind of a one one person band, you likely want to keep this on autofocus, if you, especially if you're trying to follow uh, subjects and keep them in focus and there's a lot of movement. Uh, so what I can do here is hit my function key, go under MF and go up to autofocus continuous. A lot of these focus features here are for still images for still still image mode, and that's why they're not. That's why they're grayed out right now. So th those are the two options that give me, especially this is a Sony lens. It's compatible with the camera. You put it on autofocus, and this thing actually does a really good job of uh, keeping item things in focus here. Like if if I do, let me unlock my camera here, my tripod. If I do a tilt here and go to the table here uh, and move it onto that, look at how that just autofocus to the the letters on there. Uh, if I move down, let's move down to the the leg. Uh, did a pretty good autofocus. Let's do something further away. See as I move up to the monitor and uh, and the background there, it, it maintains focus really, really well. Uh, it autofocuses to that that crosshair there essentially. If you're following a subject, uh, you'll probably want to go. You would I would recommend going under your focus mode auto continuous. Now move over to this focus area here. 
and it will tell it how to treat the autofocus. It'll tell you how much, it's telling the camera what area of screen to concentrate on. If you're following a subject, you probably want to go center weighted. If you're kind of, because subjects are not always necessarily dead centered in the middle, but they're center weighted, which means there's kind of, it's from the dead center on out a little ways rather than the kind of, kind of extreme portions of the screen to the top or the bottom, top bottom or, or the sides. Uh, but center weighted is a good way to go that I find that works really well with, with subjects, with a moving subject, with a moving person. Now another thing you have here uh, after you're center weighted is you can go to flexible spot and select that and it does, and this is telling it, you can, I'm using the arrows on the back of my, uh, my wheel, I'm arrowing left, right, up, down, and you can tell it what area to concentrate on. And then you're just pushing your button and it will select that and now you notice it's got the little gray uh, square right there that's saying this is the area I'm going to mostly try to keep in focus. Uh, so you can tell it to move to different parts of the screen and you can tell it to go, um, you can have an expanded flexible spot. It's just got a whole bunch of things here. I'd say mess around with this, experiment with it, put subjects in front and see what it keeps uh, in focus the best. Otherwise you can just, I found that center is really good for following subjects. Uh, the multi is really good for if you're doing backgrounds, if you're doing like, uh, if you're just doing scenics, uh, the white is a good way to go. And then with the white, if something walks right up to the camera, it'll, it'll automatically focus to that. So I'm just gonna go wide right now. I got an autofocus continuous. Otherwise, you can put it in autofocus manual and do it yourself. All right, last thing I want to talk about is if you are in manual focus mode, uh, some ways of determining what is in focus or not. I'm going to put this in manual focus here. This even helps on autofocus as well in some instances. But, um, but if you want to see what is in sharp focus, uh, a couple things that you can do is you can turn uh, your peaking on. I'm going to go to menu. I'm going to go to menu, and I'm going to arrow up to my number two camera and arrow over to the the left camera here, the number one. And an arrow down, go inside this menu, I'm gonna go all the way over to, which one's it under here, there it is, no, next one, next one, right there, number 13, page number 13, you arrow down to peaking setting, and you hit the middle button to enter this. All right, peaking display, I'm gonna turn this on, and peaking level, I'm gonna put on high right now just to exaggerate it, just to show you what's happening. In peaking color, we're gonna make this, uh, we'll make this red. You know, these colors to choose from, depending on what color that you got a lot of color of in the room, I would recommend red right now. And let's take a look at our image. So I hit menu to get out of that. Now I'm going to videotape my screen with my phone here because it doesn't display the peaking across. I'll show you what peaking uh, looks like. Yeah, for some reason, peaking will not come through. It's, so if you use an external recorder, it doesn't destroy your image uh, by burning peaking into it. But right now I've got, um, but right now I've got peaking on things that are in focus. And what you're going to see here, since I chose red, you're going to have kind of this high contrasty globs of red that show up on your image as you change focus. All right, now if you look at like the letters on this uh, image right here as I go in and out of focus, look especially right here next to the plug adapter, you see a concentration of red come around the item as it gets in sharp focus. Right there, it's in sharp, look at it even on the background, the, the kind of wavy effect that it gets from creating peaking on all those lines on the on the texture, that carpeted wall. But yeah, you can see things turning red and kind of going not red ones out of focus. As you get the heaviest concentration of peaking on an item, that is the best thing that's in focus right there. That you get the heaviest concentration, that just a little bit of red on it doesn't mean that it's uh, not in focus, doesn't mean that it's in perfect focus, uh, but when you get the highest concentration, uh, you move your lens back and forth till you get the highest concentration, then you know what's in sharp focus. And another thing, under the camera number one and this focus magnifier here, uh, if you select that, it'll bring up this focus magnifier here. And that once again, that is under uh, menu number 13 under the camera one. You push your focus magnifier uh, and it brings a square box and you push it again and it zooms up inside of that square box. And now you can move your camera around and you can get a really sharp focus on something that it's zoomed up. It's done this digital zoom and now we can really tell it looks a little soft there, but it's not. It's actually in focus, but it's just that the letters are so small and it's zoomed way up on it so you can get a good sharp focus. That's another way of, uh, of, of getting, of getting uh, something in focus manually. And I actually like to go under the camera number two here and arrow down to custom key. I'm going to select uh, custom key. I'm going to go down to the, the film little icon here and do custom key. I'm going to arrow over to the uh, top button, which is this little, even show, shows the highlight here is your C1 button on top of the camera. Uh, and I'm going to program that. I'm going to select this and I'm going to arrow to the right until I get to AF1 autofocus mode. And I'm going to keep arrowing over. 
until I find on uh, page 8 here uh, in the Focus Assist, I'm going to select Focus Magnifier. So that is now programmed. The Focus Magnifier is now programmed for my C1 key on top of the camera. Now I don't have to dig into a menu to find it. Uh, if I go back, if I hit Menu out of that and get back to my main screen here, now if I hit C1 on top of my camera, it brings it up automatically, then I push it again and it zooms up to that area. But if I hit it once, I can use the arrows up and down on the back wheel of my camera to change what I want to see is in focus so I don't have to pan my camera. I'm going to say that. Now I'm going to hit C1, it zooms up to it, and it shows the little zone over here that it's, uh, that it's zoomed up to. And now I can use my uh, focus on top of my camera here and get a really good sharp focus on that image and then hit C1 again to get out of it. And now I programmed a hotkey on top of my camera for the focus magnifier. All right, guys, that concludes most of these settings and understanding most of these items on your screen here for setting up your camera, getting it ready to shoot video and or film uh, with your camera. And that's the way how to control it all manually and what, uh, what all the basic functions on this camera uh, do to, to get it set up. If you have any questions, please post them and thanks for watching.